Bruce Lawn. So in light of this Sandler Moore conversation, some interesting things came up regarding Christian modesty, regarding people in general having some degree of liberty, but what's too much liberty, so on and so forth. And of course, there was the situation of you know, different cultural norms. This happened about six months ago. Candace Cameron Bohr, uh, people lost it on her because she posted a photo of her husband of 24 years, uh, you know, seemingly holding her breast. The question of, hey, what is Christian modesty? How should Christians behave different than the world? What does that look like? So on and so forth. And she talks about, uh, for all of my Christian fans that are questioning my post with my husband's hand on my boo, my husband of 24 years, thinking it was inappropriate, it makes me laugh because it's my husband. We have so much fun together. Some people would say, hey, that's immodest. She shouldn't have done that. You know, dancing on your husband, that's immodest. The, the standards are all over the place. And so what I want to do, and by the way, I believe in modesty. I think modesty is important for men and women, by the way. I decided to pull the big guns out and praise God, Dr. Michael Brown just talked about this very idea of Christian modesty. So I'm going to defer to the elder and let, play this clip from his broadcast the other day. And in that regard, we'll, we'll unpack it and we'll talk about it together. So let's let's jump into this clip. Dr. Michael Brown, asked Dr. Michael Brown, uh, show, friend of the channel. Let's 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 unpack. It. How can we address modesty and how Christian women dress, including, including swimsuits? They don't want to hear about it because they are free in Christ to do whatever they want. Yeah. Because they're free in Christ to do whatever they want. Notice the phrasing of that question, right? It's an interesting phrase, because they're free in Christ to do whatever they want. Is that what freedom in Christ is? So uh, it's often challenging because you don't want to get legalistic. You don't want to get legalistic. Interesting. In terms of, well, exactly how much flesh has to be covered. And, uh, you know, you do have different religious groups where men uh, go swimming with men and women go swimming with women. And I've been in parts of the world where if, if people go swimming, they go fully dressed. They, they go in the clothes they're wearing because of modesty. Respect. Is that, you know, hey, there's parts of the world that that's, that's, that's what they're on. Respect. Um, I've, I've seen that, not just in Christian culture, but in other cultures. Hmm. Um, and, and then, you know, some would think, well, this is a modest bathing suit. You know, legs and arms are exposed, but everything else covered. Others would say, well, this is a modest two-piece. Others a modest bikini. So, so where does one draw the line? The context. There's parts of the world where men go swimming with men, women go swimming with women. When, I, when you hear that out loud, when I hear that out loud, I live in Southern California, when I hear that out loud, my brain goes, wow, I couldn't even imagine. I couldn't even imagine that there are parts of the world where if you want to go to the beach, all the dudes go, you know, go on this side of the beach, all the women go on that side of the beach. And then he says, yeah, and then there's, you know, women who wear a one-piece, then there's a two-piece, then there's a bikini. Where do you draw the line? Where do we draw the line? This is the question with modesty. I remember, oh, on a few occasions, teaching on holiness in the midst of uh, beach culture. I'm in Southern California, so this is, this is speaking directly to me. Uh, one day I was teaching young people about Jesus revolution and I was the hero. They were cheering me on and eating up every word. Then the next day I talked about holiness to the Lord as part of Jesus revolution and they were not happy with me. <laughs> and, um, you know, one gal, um, may have been from Australia. I forget, but grew up on the beach, very devoted to the Lord and said, you know, she's, you know, been on the beach for years and years and she, walks around and never once thinks of, of thinking a lustful thought at the guys in bathing suits. And I said, well, when you come walking by in your bikini, are they thinking lustful thoughts about you? Hmm. She never thought about that. So here are a few, I, I would ask some principles, okay? I, w I would ask some questions based on principles. Questions based on principles, not absolute standards. Because a lot of this is going to subje be subjective to your culture, to the region of the world that you live in, to what's going on with the, the, the city that you may be in might be different. So here are some principles that men and women, men, you're not off the hook, bro. You're not off the hook. Some of y'all, some of y'all dudes, y'all be posting more thirst traps than these Christian women do. Christian men, Mr. Sixpack. Okay, Mr. I'm doing it in the name of fitness. 
<laughs> so let's 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 hear some of these principles. I, I would I would say, do we agree that the purpose of clothing is what we're trying to cover up, not what we're trying to reveal? That's one thing. A, a second thing, do we agree that God clothed Adam and Eve so that they shouldn't be naked? Okay. Do we agree that the Bible calls for modesty? And do we agree that we are called not to put a stumbling block in front of anyone? Now, again, there are different standards. You know, you can be an ultra-Orthodox Jewish standards where a, a woman is, is covered, aside from her face being covered, you know, her arms right down to her wrists and her legs right down to her ankles, she has to be covered. Mm. And anything less than that is immodesty. So you, you don't want to... Uh, look, for one woman who gets saved and now she wears, you know, a modest one-piece bathing suit, she is super covered up because she used to barely wear anything. Hmm. It, Did you guys catch that? For one woman, her wearing a modest bathing suit is super covered up because she used to barely she used to barely wear anything. For a for some women, for some women, they used to intentionally go to the gym with the booty shorts on so that they would get attention, revealing their booty and how fit they were, so they'd intentionally get attention. For some men, they intentionally did that. They, they, would, they would go and find a, the smallest possible tank top where it's just a string and they, their chest is out and then there's just like a little bit and then it goes down and then their tummy's out, right? Intentionally trying to show off their bodies. Okay, and then that same person wears a muscle tee, and now their body's exposed. You can see that they got some definition. That same woman now maybe instead of wearing the booty shorts, she's now wearing the full on all the way yoga pants with the shirt that covers up her her, her, her bottom, and and now you can still see her figure. But the intention has shifted. She's now been consecrated. She now looks different. She's not intentionally trying to reveal and get attention for her body. She's just in there doing her thing. A lot of this is about intentionality. People evolve. People progress. So let's, let's keep going. Is she not honoring the Lord because she hasn't covered up even more? You, you've got to leave things between people and God. You've got to leave things between people and God. Dr. Michael Brown said it. I didn't say it. Don't you come for me in the comment section. He said it. Dr. Michael Brown said it. He's smart. He's way smarter than me. He got like a doctorate degree and knows the original Hebrew and Greek and the Bible. Dr. Michael Brown said it. I'll run it back one more time. You've got to leave things between people and God. And what you have to do in your own life is say, okay, if if I'm going to stumble in this environment, or if I think I'm going to cause someone to stumble, then I have to dress differently, or I have to avoid certain environments. Or I have to avoid certain heat, man. This man, this man is just full of gems. Let's, let's just run this back. Let's just... Or I have to avoid certain environments. Some of y'all need to avoid them all. Some of you fellas, you can't go to the gym and, and, and maintain unlustful thoughts because every girl that's walking by in just regular workout clothes is causing you to, to, to take 25 glances and gawk at her. You may need to go get T25. You may need to get Body Fitness Plus and just work out at home, bro, for a season. You may need to avoid that. You may need to avoid going to the beach if you can't handle the heat. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to rhyme. Also, don't need to go out of your way to flaunt your body. But I would just encourage people, you know, say women, because guys tend to be more lusting after women with their eyes in the reverse. I know the reverse happens, but it tends to be more, you know, men looking at women and women making themselves attractive to men. I just ask, are you putting a stumbling block in front of your brothers? Well, that's for them to figure out. No, actually, you're called not to put a stumbling block. It goes both ways. It goes both ways. Some of you guys got to avoid some stuff. Some of you guys need to not flaunt your bodies. Some of these dudes out here, y'all, you know, y'all be doing a little extra stuff. You gotta leave certain things up between people and God. Dr. Michael Brown said it. Take it up with him. Go leave him a nasty comment. Don't leave me a nasty comment. Go leave him a nasty comment. All right. Kingstream Entertainment. Bruce Lawn.
Hey, thank you so much for making it till the end of this video. If you found it valuable, please consider giving it a like and subscribing. You can check out one of the other videos related to this that'll be over here. Now I gotta tell you about a free training I have for anyone that is an entrepreneur, a creative, an artist, but maybe you are unsure on how to find your voice, how to find your niche. I have a free training in the description of this video. Check it out. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you and I will see you on the next video.